All right, this is exactly where we left off. There's just one more change I want to make prior to um, ending this segment of, uh, of our exploration, um, because we need to match what's going on in the articles uh, you're about to read. So the models they have have one other complication. Uh, they have two different A values. Now they're gonna be talking about R values um, in those articles. Um, we're going to modify that um, after you read the article. We're gonna talk about um, time constants and altering our A, Bs, and Cs. Um, for now, I wanna stick with A, B, and C. Um, but what happened in the outbreak is when the outbreak begins, no one knows it's an outbreak. So we really have an A1 value, um, which is before you know the outbreak is happening. Um, so uh, that is gonna be a high number. Um, so for COVID-19, it was fairly high. It might be a number even like three here, okay? Um, which remember, this is per week. So that means that each infected person, um, essentially when the, uh, when S, is near 100% of the population, um, the S value would be one. So that would really mean that people are infecting at a rate of about three to one. So every infected person is infecting about three other people. Um, so that might be a realistic number for what was happening initially. Um, and with exponential growth, that would be explosive. All right, so that's the A1. Okay, so this is the S to E coefficient sort of before intervention, when it's just nature's running its course, right? So that's not, not a good scenario, all right? Um, and then we're going to have a, so that's what's gonna happen sort of in the initial period. Um, then we're gonna have an A2. This is once the uh, authorities realize that something bad is going on or people become fearful and they start um, you know, wearing masks and not going out, um, we'll have a different A value. So that might be a number closer to one or, or even below one. So there's an A2. So this is um, the S to E coefficient in weeks to the negative one. Okay, after intervention. And it can be as extreme as you know the police patrolling the street and arresting people who come out of their houses. Um, so around the world we have different. Oh, that's WK per week. Um, so we you know have different levels of intervention happening in different places in the world right now. Um, and but that's what they're driving this A value down. But we have an initial A that's high, and then a later A that's hopefully much lower. Um, that's the goal of it. Um, so we need to have, just like we had a T delay, um, which maybe I'm going to change that right now in the code. So make sure you do the same. I'm going to call this T back for the time in which to get the vaccine. So this will be T back. Um, that's when the vaccine happens. Now it's going to show up later in the code. So make sure you do shift enter. When you do that, um, if you didn't just retype it again and do shift enter, so it changes the name later. So given that we're gonna have multiple delays, I'm gonna call that delay T back, okay? Um, let's call this T2 up here, all right? Um, so let's say that um, from the time this outbreak started, um, it took us, you know, 15 weeks, remember all of our times are in weeks, um, to begin interventions. So when there hardly anyone was infected, um, there was no one would be, even know that they have to do interventions. So it takes a while before you know that you're going to have to do interventions and um, you know, then knowing how severe to make them, um, this may have actually phased in um, going from A1 to A2. Uh, you know, first there were travel restrictions and then there were restrictions on how large the groups could be. So it's really a transition from A1 to A2, um, but for our model, we're going to assume we instantaneously switch from A1 to A2 at 15 weeks right now, um, but we'll be able to play with that parameter. So this is the time to enter intervention phase. And that will be in weeks. 
Okay, so that's a time in weeks to do that. So here's the tricky thing. We have two different A values, all right? Um, so let's see where that will change things. So we're gonna have to have some if statement. If we're before T2, we're going to use A1. If we're after T2, we'll use A2. So anywhere where we had A, it will now have to be an A1 or an A2, and we'll have to have an if statement to tell us which one to use. So let's follow down in our code and determine where A shows up next. Ah, hopefully you have your differential equation sheet out. A showed up in the, it was showed up in the DSDT, but we're not using that differential equation. The first time it shows up is in the DEDT. So notice there's an A there, right? The second time it shows up, I believe, actually that's the only time it shows up. We're lucky um, because we didn't use equation one. We use this instead, the idea that all of them total to one. Um, that's where equation one would have had A in it, um, but we're not using that. Instead, um, we use the total equation. And so the only equation that has A in it is this one right here. So we need to just put a qualifier in here. Um, we have this DEDT um, will be true if, um, let's say T of IT is less than or equal to, uh, it doesn't matter, with the equal to, it doesn't matter too much whether you put that in. If it's less than T2, the time to phase two, then we'll let DE equal A1. Okay, notice this is A1 times I of IT times S of IT. Okay, then let's put a space in here. We'll have else. That will be any time greater than that. Um, we're going to just copy the same line of code. So it would help to do that because all we're going to do is change that to AT, A2. So we'll have a second rate at which the disease will spread um, uh, and people will become infected, actually go to the exposed pool first, um, but they will eventually be infected. So we've now broken this up. Let me just space this out a little bit um, and let's highlight it and use control I. I think it might be command I on an apple. Um, so control I. And now we have two different rates at which we can move people to the exposed pool. One is going to be a high rate at the beginning of the infection um, before any measures are taken to slow things down. And one, let me leave one space there, and one will be a slower rate. Whichever rate we choose will affect DEDT, the, the rate of growth of E, and that's what we'll end up using right here. So we really only had to change um, a couple of lines of code with an if statement to determine if we're before the intervention time or after the intervention time. So now let's see what happens with that. We, the plots are going to be the same. We're working with the same plots. Um, it might be nice if, well, let me talk about that. It, we could add a feature where we put in the, the line where we switch over, but let's just run the code and see what happens first. Okay, so we're in case four. Um, you can see this spike. Okay, so th this is actually interesting. Um, right in here in the graph, we have an extremely sharp spike to the E. Okay, because this was growing exponentially more or less um, before we did the intervention. So remember, the intervention is at week 15. That's exactly the top of the spike. So right when intervention occurs, um, we have a drastic change in our um, exposed pool. It was shooting up rapidly. And obviously we did very strict interventions to get A2 down to one, um, from three to one instantaneously. So we have an instantaneous um, change in the graph. This is probably a cusp point right here. And um, that causes our infection uh, curve to change drastically. So the, the peak of the infection curve is a little bit after the peak of the 
um, exposed curve, um, but the exposed curve almost you know, has a radical turnaround right at the point where we do the intervention. If we hadn't done the intervention, um, I'll, not doing the intervention just requires us to make T2 um, bigger than T max. Oh, and this is in, right now we're doing two years. Let's just do one year. So that's one year with intervention at 15 weeks. We can remove the intervention, not by making A2 zero. Um, that would be really um, an extreme change uh, because we would not be adding anyone to the exposed pool at that point, um, but by making T2 bigger than 52 or at 52. So by changing T2 to 52, that tells me what would happen if I did no intervening. If I do no intervening, let's see, you can see the exposed curve grew um, rapidly um, for a while. And then we had the, um, the infection curve um, follow that a little bit by doing the intervention at week 15. Okay, and you can see that the infection curve looks like it's peaking um, around uh, you know, probably around 23 per, actually that's probably about 25%. We could find that out, just do max of I. We could zoom in repeatedly, or if we, oh, I was, good guess, 25% um, is where it peaks. If I do the intervention and radically change how we're um, operating at week 15, I think we'll see that curve come down significantly. Okay, it drops below 20% um, by doing the intervention when we did. Um, if we had started the intervention earlier, let's see what happens if we go to week 10 on the intervention. Wow, if we had started the intervention earlier, um, we can see that the infection rate um, goes way down um, and at its peak, um, let's see what the peak is. The max of I is only 8%. So early intervention makes a huge difference in um, how this plays out. Um, now we're also assuming that we were able to drive through, uh, our, that our interventions would drive that A2 value all the way down to one. So early interventions made a big difference in what happened. Um, let's see what's happening to our exposed graph right around week 10 up to where this peak is. So you can see right there at week 10, we have a sharp change in what our exposed graph looks like. Um, so it was shooting up rapidly. That was going to be trouble if we followed that curve. Um, it sort of leveled off for a while um, and then continued upward a little bit, um, but it's not nearly as bad as what would have happened um, if that curve had continued upward, right? So um, that makes a big difference in how many people are going to be sort of hitting the hospitals at the same time. Uh, so we can stretch that out. And um, so those are important things um, that happen in the article you're about to read, um, where by uh, adjusting when we react to the crisis and how we react. So when we react is the T2 value. That's when we go into phase two. Um, I would just call it T intervention, but we're going to add another phase later um, for what happens in the long run. Um, and we can have an A2 that is low, like one. Uh, we can limit the damage that would be done. So I will end this, um, this video at that point, and um, you will be able to play around with this model in the near future.